Tony DeWitt here, Missouri appellate attorney and a guy who likes to make the law make sense here on YouTube. I should probably entitle this uh, video, Lawyers Behaving Badly, Season 2. I'll tell you more in a moment. One of the fundamental concepts of American justice is that in a civil lawsuit, there is something called discovery. Discovery is designed to help people, in essence, solve their own problems. Discovery requires that when asked, a defendant has to provide all of the information they can that is relevant to the plaintiff's lawsuit, and the plaintiff has to provide all of the information that is relevant to their claim to the defendant to enable them, hopefully, to try the case and try it well. The process involves a number of different uh, tools. One of them is an interrogatory, which is a question that must be answered under oath. One of them is a request for admission, which basically is just as it sounds. We ask that you admit this fact. Very common, for example, to admit, ask them to admit that they've been sued in their proper corporate name. And then the third thing is requests for production of documents. Almost any business produces documents, and almost every business has a custodian of documents sometimes multiple custodians of documents. For example, at my firm, I am the custodian of documents that have been sent to me by email. They're on my computer. Some of them are in an archive on a hard drive, but I am the custodian of those emails. And so if my law firm got sued and someone requested all of the emails related to a certain topic, even if I did not have a thing to do with the case, they would still search my computer to determine whether or not there are any documents on there that may be relevant to the inquiry that the, that the plaintiff had. In addition to those rules, the federal rules provide something called Rule 26 disclosures, things that both sides have to tell the other side without even being asked. For example, the existence of any insurance that might be used to satisfy a judgment in a case. All of these things are designed to make the process of resolving a dispute go quickly and easily. It never does, but that's how it's designed. The people who are in charge of seeing that the machinery of litigation functions properly are the lawyers for the plaintiff and the lawyers for the defendant. In a minor traffic accident case, even though there might be some gamesmanship, uh, for example, an interrogatory that says, name all of the witnesses who witnessed this accident, uh, the, the defendant would only name people who saw the accident. It wouldn't name people, for example, who may have seen the video that they recorded on their business's security camera because that wasn't the question that was asked. So there's some gamesmanship like that. But generally speaking, most of the time, ethical attorneys comply and cooperate in discovery. And they do that because they realize that the more both sides know about their respective cases, the greater the likelihood is that at some point they will be able to resolve them. So, recently I did a video about endopharmaceuticals and the problems that they had in Tennessee where a default judgment was granted against them. And I also discussed the fact that New York State was going after them for a default judgment because the lawyers that represented them, Arnold and Porter, and again, I am not throwing any stones here at Arnold and Porter. I'm sure they're a fine law firm. But 
Generally speaking, the allegations were that they did not do a good job of searching their databases for responsive documents. So when a lawsuit like this gets filed, it was filed by the state of New York. It dealt with opioid abuse in the state of New York, and it requested documents that were relevant to that action. As you might very well imagine, a email from a sales rep discussing a, a situation where a doctor appeared to be operating a pill mill would, of course, be relevant to that lawsuit. But that email was not disclosed, at least not until the 11th hour. And that severely prejudiced the state of New York, and they sought relief. Ultimately, what happened is the pharmaceutical manufacturer caved in and they settled the case probably for far more than they would have had the case gone to trial and they received a judgment. They settled because there was a lot of evidence that they were hiding the truth. And nothing tends to make a jury angrier than a defendant that lies about its conduct. And when you don't cooperate in discovery, when you don't disclose things that you're required to disclose, it's the same as lying. The problem, however, is greater than just the impact on endopharmaceuticals because their corporate counsel and their legal counsel, Arnold and Porter, are now in ethical hot water. The ethical rules in nearly every state require that an attorney not obstruct the other party's access to evidence. And what that means is, when you get a valid discovery request, you have to satisfy that request. And as I mentioned before, in the Tennessee case, Arnold and Porter certified that they had complied when, in fact, they hadn't searched all of the custodians, they hadn't searched all of the databases, and they dumped over 100,000 documents at the end of the case on the state of Tennessee in that action. And as a result, there were pretty severe consequences for them. There was a default judgment entered against them. So the purpose of this is to point out that now it has become a feeding frenzy. Almost everybody who has endo as a defendant is now going back and demanding that a discovery master review what has been done in discovery in those cases because it has been clear that either Arnold and Porter or endo has not been candid with the courts. Now, let's separate those two out for a moment. It is quite possible that Endo did not provide the names of all the custodians to their attorneys. It is also quite possible that Endo did provide all those names and Arnold and Porter made a command decision that it wasn't necessary to search those and that they could get by with providing less than was required. Because Arnold and Porter knew that Endo was a defendant in multiple lawsuits all across the country. As a result, somebody, either Endo or Arnold and Porter, made a very bad decision and it wound up very bad for the defendant. And I suspect it's going to wind up very badly for the attorneys at issue. Those attorneys are most likely going to be reported to their home state bars. Their Admissions in the states where they are practicing on behalf of Endo are probably going to be withdrawn. They're going to, the, the Endo is going to have to hire new counsel in that case. And it's going to have to be probably from somebody other than Arnold and Porter. You're going to see uh, intense scrutiny by other plaintiffs who have Arnold and Porter in their cases. And you're going to see the documents that were produced uh, and the, the litigation documents especially that were produced by Tennessee and by New York State show up in multiple other cases all across the country. The big problem for Arnold and Porter, which is a huge law firm and has a national reputation, 
is that anywhere its lawyers go now, they are going to be tarred with the brush of having been engaged in unethical conduct. Now keep in mind, I'm not saying they did engage in ethical conduct, in unethical conduct. I'm saying that they are tarred with that brush because there is at the very least the overt suspicion that they either were knowledgeable and didn't act to correct their client's error, or they were directly culpable and were at least in major part responsible for the failure to cooperate in discovery. Here's the other part of the problem for both Arnold and Porter and Endo, and that is that judges do not like discovery disputes. They expect lawyers to get along. They expect lawyers to solve their own problems. They will step in and solve problems if they are required to, but they don't like to have to do that. And when they catch somebody, whether it's the defendant or the defendant's counsel or the plaintiff or the plaintiff's counsel, cheating in the discovery process, that's when lawyers and clients get sanctioned. And that's the way it should be. In order for the system to work, people have to be honest. There is a reason that you're required to take an oath when you sit to testify. You're required to tell the truth because telling the truth is the foundation of our legal system. Now, that doesn't mean everybody does it, but it means everybody's supposed to. So what will happen in all this? Well, we don't know. We know that this is coming up now a lot in the legal press, and it's probably not long, uh, or probably won't be long, before it shows up in the national press, like Wall Street Journal and uh, New York Times. It's going to happen. And the fallout for the law firm could be catastrophic. They could wind up losing large numbers of attorneys. Those attorneys could go to other law firms that don't have this problem. And ultimately, that tends to be what happens when there is an implosion like this in a law firm. Now again, Arnold and Porter could be completely innocent. Endo could be completely innocent in all of this. But somebody screwed up somewhere. And somebody's going to have to pay the butcher's bill at the end of the day. And Endo has already settled multiple lawsuits at this point to steer themselves away from the shoals of being sanctioned. Even though Endo is not likely to get sanctioned in these courts now, there is a strong possibility that Arnold and Porter, if they are adjudged to be guilty of this conduct, and that's only if they are adjudged to be guilty, and they have a defense, and they've been very strident about that defense, saying that, you know, it wasn't us, we didn't do this, and, and the other guys aren't being honest with you, all of that will settle itself out in the courtroom and in the litigation process. Somebody's going to be held accountable and somebody somewhere is going to lose their job and maybe their law license. But again, that's as it should be. Because when you cheat, you deserve what you get. So that's my latest installment of Lawyers Behaving Badly. I hope that if you found this interesting or uh, at least thought-provoking, you would do me the courtesy of smashing that like button. And also, if you haven't already, go over here and smash on the subscribe icon and click the notification bell so that you can be notified whenever I release a video here on this channel. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a terrific day, and I'll catch you on here next time.